Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Dr. William Clark, pastor of Living Faith Church here in the city of Hartford. I'm so excited to be with you for another Wisdom Wednesday. This is indeed the day the Lord has made. We will, we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy to get with you guys again. Um, I just enjoy, I enjoy every moment that I have to teach the word of the Lord, to share it with you, and to learn with you, to, particularly when we have our post-Bible study discussions. These discussions really provide life to me, uh, and it's exciting to me. And so I appreciate just every time we get together to just grow together as Christians. Uh, but I do take seriously, and I do take honor uh, in the job that I have, which is to teach the word of the Lord. Indeed, I have a word today for you. Uh, we're in still in the middle of our wisdom series. Wisdom is better than series, and we've been covering a number of topics. I certainly encourage you to check out the church's website, livingfaithct.org, to click on uh, the video, uh, the videos where you can rewatch sermons, uh, rewatch worship services or worship songs that we've been, uh, been playing, as well as the Bible study series. And so I encourage you to check that out. Uh, that's livingfaithct.org. Uh, but especially in this Wisdom Wednesday uh, series, it's just been powerful. And I want to uh, introduce another one to you. Uh, we're still in the book of Ecclesiastes, but before we do that, I want to jump into prayer and then we'll jump into our Bible study for tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much for the wisdom you've given us through your written word. We appreciate the record that you left behind for us to evaluate, to study, to assess, to apply. And we thank you for the power of the word because your word is everlasting. Uh, it is, is timeless. And the beautiful thing about your word, Father, that its application uh, applies to generation after generation. It's wisdom is generationally agnostic, that no matter the age and stage that we are in our life, your word is still true. It rings, it rings true. And so we thank you so much for your word. Richard, bless us now with revelation tonight. Would you give us deeper understanding to understand your word and to appreciate your word, to show our appreciation through our engagement in Bible study and to show our appreciation through the application of your word. Father, we appreciate you. We love you. We welcome you into our learning space tonight. We pray this in the master's name of Jesus. Let the people of God say amen and amen. All right. Um, I want to focus on this. Ecclesiastes chapter. Um, let me see here. How do I want to deal with this? I was just I was going to just focus on verse 15, but let's let's try to do 14, 15. Let's do Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. Uh, the topic tonight is wisdom is better than delays. Wisdom is better than delays. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 14 and then 15. A fool 14. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? My goodness. Verse 15, the toil of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. These two verses, I could have just split these up and just done them separately. And I'll try my best to combine them in one Bible study. But this is some powerful stuff. Let's just read them one more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 14. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be, and who can tell him what will be after him. Verse 15, the toll of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. You know, let me uh, let me just introduce this Bible study from this, from this perspective. We have been, over the past four weeks, three or four weeks uh, in church on Sundays, talking about prophecy, the role of prophecy, the role of the prophetic word. And we've been talking about the limitations of prophecy and the limitations of us receiving prophecy, primarily primarily because from Paul's perspective, he taught us and showed us that we as human agents only know pieces. We only know pieces of the story. We only know pieces of what's happening, what is to come, what will be, what shall be. And because we only know pieces, prophetically, we're only able to speak in pieces. We're only able to speak from the perspective of the life that we live, from the lens that we live life through. And consequently, for those of us on the receiving end of prophecy, we're only able to receive prophecy uh, through faith, number one, through faith, but only through the lens of the faith that we're able to deploy. And this creates a dichotomy, it creates an issue uh, when we start to wrestle with the role of prophecy, the word of prophecy, faith, etc. 
And it's tough. It is tough to be fully engaged in your faith when you don't allow your faith to have full reign. It's difficult to let faith do what it do when you're struggling to believe that faith can indeed lead to a specific outcome that can make a difference in your life. It does require faith to believe prophecy. Now, when we talk about prophecy, I've been telling you guys that prophets exist in all realms. There are prophets, obviously, in the spiritual realm at the church. There are prophets at the doctor's office. There are prophets in your financial advisor's office. These are people who have the studied uh, what, who have studied their profession, who have studied the principles of God when it comes to health and money and other categories, law. And they understand how these things work. Believe it or not, the influence of God is throughout our mainstream culture. The way money works, the good principles of money, they are infused in our culture. The health and the management of the human body that God ordained for us, they are infused through our main culture. The the law, what is right, what is wrong, it's infused throughout main culture. Many of the prophets we know of, we interact with them outside of the church walls, which is why we need to understand the role of prophets. When the doctor gives you a doctor's report, an assessment of your health, and he says or she says that this is what you're dealing with and here is uh, the potential outcome, we tend to believe them because prophetically, as students of what their profession is, they tend to speak what does say of the Lord because it's been obvious that our health is in jeopardy due to the current condition of our body. And because of the current condition of our body, the likely outcome is going to be further sickness or death. Now, what we tend to celebrate are the miracles. The doctor said no, but Jesus said yes. Yes, that happens and miracles still happen. But I want you to recognize that prophets exist in our life on a regular basis. And reality is when miracles happen in your life, it's because God stepped in and that's what he does. But that also means that the doctor is a prophet that only knows in part and is only able to prophesy in part. The same with your money manager, the same with your lawyer, the same with anybody in your life that you deal with who studies their profession, who understand how God works, who has understood the application of the spirit of God, the wisdom of God in secular realms. God is not relegated to just the church He's not relegated to just the church walls. God is in everything that we do. He is involved in everything that we say. He's involved in everything that we are engaged in. And if we begin to understand the role of God in every facet of our life, we'll be, un- we'll be in a better position, rather. We will be in a better position to understand that the role of faith, the role of prophecy is beyond our worship on Sundays. In fact, the role of faith is applicable. To Monday through Sunday. It's applicable because God is involved in every facet of our life and of our way of being. And when we appreciate that, when we show our understanding of God's role in our life in totality, it changes how we view God. This takes us into the early parts of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 14. Because what's difficult about how we live life is that sometimes as humans, we are so arrogant, we are so self-centered, we are so focused on what we think we know, we believe we know everything. But look at verse 14, a fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be and who can tell him what will be after him. This is what we've been preaching on Sundays. We have no full idea. We have no full idea of what is to come, what will be. Why? Because we are not God. You are not God. I'm not God. And because we are not God, we cannot predict what will be. We cannot. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you lay on your face in sackcloth and ashes, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. Now, God may, in fact, give you some form of revelation. He may give you an understanding of what may come But the understanding we must all have is that we do not know everything. We just don't. 
and we never will. This is the role of the God that we worship. This is the role of the God that we praise and that we pray to. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He knows all. He is the creator of all. Our job is to not pretend to be like him. No, our job is not to act like we know we have a beeline to God and God then told me what's going to happen tomorrow. No, he didn't. In some cases, you may have been able to tap into portions of God. He's been able to reveal things to you, and you've been able to put two and two together. But to say you know exactly what's going to happen every day after today, no, you don't. You don't. This is why we have faith. This is why we must deploy faith. This is why faith is a natural part of the believer's life. But what ends up happening is in verse 14, that fools tend to talk a lot. Fools tend to talk as if they know what is and what isn't. Fools tend to multiply in words as if they had a conversation with God and they planned out tomorrow. The truth is, no one knows what tomorrow's holds. Listen, this is what this is what Solomon is saying. He said a full multiple words. They talk a lot. They always are talking. They're always speaking. They're always talking in the affirmative as if they know fact, facts, facts, facts. That no, 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 no person knows everything. In fact, the more a person talks, the more you should be a little nervous about being around them. Because they There are people in our lives that can talk so much that they can talk us into doing stuff that makes absolutely zero sense. Yeah. Yep. And being around fools, before you realize it or not, you are now engaged in some foolishness. (laughs) You're now engaged in some foolery because of the words of a fool. Solomon says the fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be. The reality that no man knows tomorrow means that the fool that's talking today does not know what he or she's talking about because they don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, in the next hour, tomorrow, etc. You know, it's, it's interesting when people pass away and we're caught off guard by it. Our first reaction is, wow, I was just talking to him yesterday, right? And we talk to people yesterday, or we talk to people today, as if they could not pass away tomorrow, or they could not pass away in their sleep at night, or have a tragedy that takes their life. There's no knowledge of tomorrow. And we tend to live life as if we know that tomorrow is indeed promised. It's not. There's no clear-cut pathway to what tomorrow will be. But a fool talks as if he or she knows what tomorrow is going to be. And Solomon says, no, no man knows what it's going to be. And who can tell what will be after him or what will come after him or what will follow in their footsteps? No one knows. No one knows. Let me encourage you. And let me give you some pastoral wisdom wisdom here. Begin to work on speaking less. We talked about this in our last Bible study. Work on speaking less and work on improving and increasing your faith more. Work on stop saying what you're going to do. Focus on stop articulating, prophesying, uh, projecting, announcing what you're going to do. And focus on having more faith. Come on now. I want you to build your faith up to the level of the speed of your mouth. If you talk a lot, if you talk in the affirmative as if you know what's going to happen, I want your faith to match that, but at the same time, decrease your words. Because God is in control. Not you, not your mouth, not your thoughts. God is in control, and we have faith in the great God that is in full control of our lives. I want you to build your faith, strengthen your faith, 
Increase your faith. So that your faith becomes the words that speak for you. So that your faith becomes how you articulate and how you communicate. I want your faith to express what you truly think about God. Wisdom is better than talking too much. Wisdom is better than multiplying your words. Wisdom is better than speaking beyond your experience and knowledge. Wisdom is much better than that. Look at verse 15, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. He says, the toil of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. Uh, This is where we're picking up our Bible study topic, but wisdom is better than delays. I can't tell you how many people, my goodness, how many people have dreams and hopes and visions of getting to a destination, but do not know how to get there. Let me just break it to you. That's all of us. All of us have dreams and hopes for tomorrow, but we do not know how to get there. And as a result of that, we all, again, need help. Now, this ties into verse 14 because a lot of us have dreams and hopes for tomorrow. We have expectations for tomorrow. We have a destination we're trying to get to. And we have been busy talking to people about what we're going to do and what we haven't done. We've been multiplying words, but what we haven't done was talk to those who know the pathway, who know the straight line, who know the most efficient and fastest way to get to where we're trying to go. We spent so much time talking about, I'm going to start a business. Um, I'm going to get this job. I'm going I'm to marry this person. I'm going to have this life. And did not spend enough time talking to people who have done what we are trying to do. And this is what Solomon is getting at. The toil of a fool wears him or her out. Some of us are worn out by our relationships because we just don't know what to do. My goodness. You ever, um, during a family uh, event, you play a game, a cards, a board game, video game, and the people that don't have fun during a game are the people that don't know the rules or don't know that tactics of how to win the game. But the person that has the most fun playing a game or engaging in activity are the persons that know the rules. They know the sneaky tricks. They know how to jump in and jump out and how to maneuver around this and that situation and scenario. They get a kick out of beating you. They get a kick out of knowing that you're going to try something that they have an answer for. And the people who lose are just tired of the game. I'm tired of this stupid game. Y'all always cheating. Y'all always think y'all better than everybody else. That's that's what your family says to you, right? The fool does that. A fool doesn't know how to get to the city, so it wears him out. It stresses him out. He don't he doesn't know how to handle the journey. He doesn't appreciate the scenery. He doesn't appreciate the role other people play. The fool, because he doesn't know how to get to the city, he is so wrapped up into himself, he doesn't even notice that there are other people going to the same city. Go figure. The fool is so wrapped up into himself, he doesn't even notice that there are signs pointing arrows to the next sign that will eventually get him to the city. Go figure. A fool is so focused on themselves. They're so focused on their thoughts, their emotions, their feelings, their way of being that they don't notice that there are people in their life, people around them who are going to the same location. If you believe that you are the only Christian who's trying to get to heaven, you are sadly mistaken. If you believe that you're the only Christian who's trying to have a better financial outcome, a better health outcome, a better marital outcome, a better relational outcome, a better career outcome, you are sadly mistaken. There are a lot of believers and non-believers who are trying to get to the same place you're trying to go to. And a fool is the one that does not recognize that there is a pathway that has been clearly laid out and that there are other people traveling on it. See, in our faith, sometimes we focus on us. We focus on the fact that, well, I can't worry about other people. I got to worry about my, my own self, which is true. But I'm telling you, the testimonies of the saints are how we overcome. This is the word of the Lord. It's the testimony of the saints that have made it through. They have overcome the same battles, the same foolery that we're dealing with that will help us overcome. This is the role of church. This is the role of having brothers and sisters in the faith because when one overcomes, their testimony becomes another weapon in our arsenal to defeat the enemy. 
Come on, church. This is good. Come on, church. This is why we come to church to fellowship, albeit on Zoom, Facebook, or in person. We come to fellowship because we need to hear the testimonies of our brothers and our sisters. We need to hear the testimonies of people who have overcome. We need to hear the testimonies of people who have seen God perform a miracle and who have done miraculous things for them. Because when we hear what God has done for them, then we, in fact, can draw on that information to figure out how to live life better. Why? Because now I know how God can work. I know what God can do. I can recognize the signs that God has been placing in my life, and I can take off the blinders and see the direction he's pointing me into. But Solomon says, the toil of a fool wearies him. Work wearies the fool. The journey wearies the fool and makes him tired. It's because, he says, for the fool does not know the way to the city. There is a map to every destination in our life. There's a map to heaven, and that map leads through Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a map to financial breakthrough. There's a map to a better lifestyle. There's a map to better financial outcomes. There's a map to better relationships. There's a map to parenting. There's a map to a good marriage. There's a map to better communities and better cities. There's a map to solving this pandemic. There's a map to every element in our life. We have to take off the hat that says, I'm a fool and I know everything. And look at verse 14 and stop talking so much and allow God to lead us. Allow God to lead you. Verse 14, stop talking so much in verse 14. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how God's going to move this thing. How about you ask God to give you wisdom and you move in the directions that he's pointing you to? I I've been preaching the scripture and I'm going to keep saying it till I take my last breath. Isaiah 30, 20, 21. Your teachers are behind you telling you to go left or right. The experiences you've been through, the experiences you're going through right now are telling you you're on the right path or you're not. Are you listening or are you busy talking? (laughs) The direction to the city has indeed been laid out. But the fool who is trying to get to the city, he's tired by the journey because he just doesn't know how to ask for help, won't ask for help, won't listen for help, won't observe what everybody else is doing, and cannot move faster or efficiently. Therefore, by his tiredness, either the fool is delayed getting to the city, late getting to the city, or just quits the journey altogether. I'm afraid too many of us have been late, delayed, or just quit. If you need help, would you be so kind to yourself to raise your hand and ask somebody for help? Instead of talking so much about what you're going to do, how about you ask somebody to help you? Not just anybody. Ask somebody who's been there, done that, and got the t-shirt, the headband, and the tube socks. Don't be a fool. Because wisdom is better than delays. I pray this Bible study has been a blessing to you. Uh, We're not going to have a discussion uh, after this Bible study, but I want to make sure that you got the word of the Lord for this Wednesday and for the rest of this week. I want to go ahead and pray. And I want to send the blessings of the Lord with you as you go ahead and live out the rest of this week. Father, we bless your name for this time together. We thank you that we had this chance to do Bible study. We thank you for the opportunity to just convene to share, to grow, to build together. We love you. We appreciate the opportunity that your word gives us. Would you now help us? Would you now help us, Father, to not be delayed, to not be wearied by the journey? Would you help us to not be tired by a journey because of our own foolish thinking, foolish behavior? But would you bless us to use wisdom? Would you give us wisdom this day, this week, this month, this year? We need you. Father, we pray blessings over those that attend this Bible study. We pray blessings over the absent portion of our church. Would you bring us back together again this Sunday, that we may worship your name together again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. You can join us through Facebook, through Zoom, or in person. We love you. See you next time.